When considering military history, especially World War II military history, you often end up getting pushed towards the main players, you know, Germany, Britain, America, Soviet Union. But you also need to give some consideration for the countries that still did exist, but didn't exist wholly as countries. So the ones that I'm referring to, as like, for example, France and Poland and Netherlands and Denmark are countries that were taken over and annexed but still had some sort of fighting force that went on ahead of them and saw it out to the end of the war. So in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the first Polish independent parachute brigade as their story is both inspiring and a heartbreaking one. Now the first Polish independent parachute brigade which existed from 1941 to 1947, it was formed on the 23rd of September 1941 in Scotland, where the members of the unit were primarily kept and trained. And it was composed, of course, of Polish soldiers. Now, they had gotten there through the fall of France initially in 1940, and they arrived in the United Kingdom to the Polish government in exile. And they were also reinforced by volunteers from the Polish army, who formed units in Russia and were evacuated via the Middle East. And further volunteers came from countries all over the world, as there would have been Polish expats spread out. Now, the troops did receive parachute and other like, specialised training at various British training centres across the country, while they were waiting over the many years until 1944, where they would initially receive action. Now in June 1944, the brigade did receive its regimental colours, and this was actually a gift from the Polish women of Warsaw, and it was secretly made and consecrated in November 1942 in a Warsaw church under German occupation. And then in July 1944, the brigade was transferred from Scotland to England. Now this is when it officially became a part of the first Allied Airborne Army, in which there was a big push to use the airborne forces, because a lot of money and training had been spent on them. And up until this point, airborne forces really hadn't been used too much. They'd been used a bit in Italy, but not to the extent that people wanted and thought that the amount of money going into them deserved to be used for. And with this, it was made operational under its newly promoted commander, Major General Stanislaw Sosabowski. And he, in his own right, deserves a video on himself and his exploits during the war and after the war as well. After the initial success of airborne operations during D-Day and the liberation of Europe progressed, they were briefed for several actions. First was to be a drop near Paris and then another in northern France and this was to be followed by Belgium. Each of these were cancelled last moment as a lot of airborne operations were. And in addition to this, for political and logistical reasons, the brigade and Polish forces as a whole were not permitted to support the popular Polish uprising in Warsaw that began in August of 1944 which must have been absolutely heartbreaking to watch the uprising in Warsaw. This would have been absolutely heartbreaking and a massive disappointment to all three Polish forces in Europe. As watching a chance for their country to start becoming free as early as this in 1944 would have been a chance they would have all wanted to jump upon. However, the first Polish independent parachute brigade would finally play its part in September 1944 as part of Operation Market Garden. The Polish 1st Independent Parachute Brigade order of battle is as follows. They have a Brigade HQ and three parachute battalions, each with three companies in it, totally nine parachute companies. They also in addition have several supporting companies and batteries, being an Airborne Anti-Tank Battery, Airborne Engineer Company, Signals Company, Medical Company, transport and supply company and a light artillery company. Now as with all airborne formations at the time, they had a high amount of small arms armament, mainly good at dealing with infantry, as well as some heavier armaments, but these would have had to have been parachute deployable. So they've been limited into what they could engage in terms of armour and fortifications. As well as having limited stores of ammunition, food and medical supplies, and essentially everything that troops will need to be in the field for extended periods of time. Now as part of Operation Market Garden, the brigade was deployed to Arnhem along with the British Airborne Forces. Now part of the brigade would be lost during its contested landings, however the brigade's 2nd battalion and elements of the 3rd managed to drop at drill, 
opposite Arnhem on the south bank of the Lower Rhine on the 23rd of September. Now this would cause a radical dislocation for the German siege around the cut-off 1st Airborne Division in Oosterbeek, ensuring its further survival by a few more days. And the Poles established a hedgehog defence perimeter on the south bank and managed to ferry 200 paratroopers across the river to support the Oosterbeek defence. They covered the withdrawal of the 1st Airborne Division during the night of the 25th to 26th of September, after being reached by advanced elements of the approaching British 30th Corps. The brigade would lose 23% of its fighting strength, amounting to roughly about 400 casualties. Now Major General Sosabowski would be controversially removed from command in December 1944, following sustained criticism from Lieutenant General Browning, whom the two didn't really have a very good relationship. And this treatment of Sosabowski, and by implication the 1st Polish Parachute Brigade, was considered to be an injustice by many of the British Airborne veterans who served and fought alongside the Poles in World War II. In 1945, the brigade would be attached to the Polish 1st Armoured Division and would undertake occupation duties in northern Germany until the 30th of June 1947, when the unit was disbanded. Most of the Polish soldiers after this would remain exiled in England, as after the war, the Soviet Union would set up a puppet government within Poland under the guise of a freely elected government. Many of the Poles would not want to return home and would not have been welcomed by Soviet authorities. Now, even though the unit was disbanded, currently the Polish 6th Air Assault Brigade is the present-day successor of this wartime brigade. Now, shortly after the war, Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands did want to award the Parachute Brigade and wrote to the government a request to do this. However, the Minister of Foreign Affairs at the time opposed the idea as he didn't want to upset relations with the Big Three being the UK, USA and the Soviet Union, as he believed it would harm Netherlands' national interests in the post-war world. Now, more than 61 years after World War II, the brigade was finally awarded the Military Order of William on the 31st of May 2006 for its distinguished and outstanding acts of bravery, skill and devotion duty during the Operation Market Garden. Now, the Military Order of William is the highest Dutch military award. Only 11 units have ever been awarded this honour, of which only two are non-Dutch. The ward is now worn by the 6th Airborne Brigade, which inherited the battle honours of the previous brigade. Going on from this, if you are looking for more interesting little tidbits of military history and other bits of information, I can't recommend Laser Pig enough, as he does quite good videos on modern and historical stuff with some interesting little stories, and also military, military history visualised and not visualised, as he does quite in-depth breakdowns of different aspects of things like why was a T-34 difficult drive all the way to battle formations of a SS Panzer Division. So thank you for watching if you've made it this long. And if you have any recommendations for improvements or other subjects you would like to be covered, then please put it in a comment down below. Thanks. Now for those of you who are interested in the more hobby side of things and tabletop wargaming, I would recommend playing slash representing them through the Warlord game system bolt action. Now in terms of the models they sell the standard British airborne kit. Now within that it comes with options to customise them as Polish airborne. And generally this is just a, a different head with the cat badge on and then you can set up the rest of the model how you want. Now in addition to that they also have the Operation Market Garden campaign book. And that has specific missions relating to different aspects of the battle. So everything from the US and the glider forces all the way up to Arnhem of the 1st Airborne Division in there. But also has, I believe, two specific Polish missions which you can play out. Now it'll give you the forces that you can play as both German and Polish. So you can plan either by yourself or with another person. Ideally with two people. So you can play both sides. And not have to switch back and forth between them. And overall, the models provided by Warlord Games are detailed enough that really advanced painters can do great work for them. And if you're unadvanced like me, and maybe a bit naff, they're still quite easy to paint and are also quite forgiving the sculpts I find as well. So you don't have to feel like an expert painter to go out, buy the models, and then bring them up to standard. Other than that, I know that it might be possible to do it through Order of Battle. 
I believe his game system, I haven't personally played it, but I believe given the scale, it might be a bit easier to pass things off and say, oh, these are Polish airborne troops. Other than that, those are the only two ways I know of playing them in tabletop gaming systems at the moment. Which, if you have any thoughts or any other places to get models from, please put them down in the comments below. Cheers.